Shalom Chavarim, I'm Steve Benun. you're watching Israeli News Live, and no doubt we'll air this on Danun Institute as well, and I, I really feel like this is going to be a blessing for many of you. And as I go through this, you might say, oh gosh, Steve, I already know this, and uh, turn the video off, and because you, it looks like familiar territory, but I can assure you, you really want to listen to this video tonight. I'm going to go into things that I had no idea about. Uh, just how beautiful the revelation is in this particular message on Genesis chapter 6. And, and I'm going into this because a very uh, precious brother that's writing a book on this subject had asked me to, uh, actually not just this subject, but uh, other issues as well, asked me if I would contribute to the work he's doing uh, in regards to Genesis chapter 6, uh, looking at the Nephilim. How did the Nephilim get here uh, in, in, we should say, after the flood? And so as I was working on that project today, I spent a great deal of the day working on this, I got some amazing revelation that I just had to come and share with you guys as well. Uh, once the book is, is available, I'll let you know where you can get a copy of this book. Uh, I know the brother that's writing it, wonderful man, and uh, I really appreciate him tremendously. So I'll kind of leave it at that right now. So we're looking at Genesis chapter 6, and as we look at this, this is what was asked to me about the sons of God, the daughters of man, and really who are they? Uh, could, could I identify them and looking at this as the Hebrew language. So let's, let's examine this. Uh, in Genesis ch uh, chapter 6 verse 1, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives whomsoever they chose. And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he also is flesh. Therefore shall his days be a hundred and twenty years. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came unto the daughters of men, they bore children to them. The same were mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. And the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination uh, of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And he repented, the Lord, that he made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. Now, let me just back up here, because the, the big issue comes about uh, who are these sons of God? And I know there's there's different opinions out there. Uh, you have the Sethite doctrine. For lack of better terms, I'll call it the Sethite doctrine. These are people that believe that the sons of God here were Seth's sons and not uh, the sons of Cain or anything else, and that the daughters of men were actually the daughters of Cain. But if you really begin to examine this, we find out that that's not the case. So if you're on that kind of argument, just bear with me, please. I, I ask you as a brother or sister, uh, just bear with me as we look at this, because this is what blew me away. All right, so we have to look at the Hebrew side of this. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Ve'yahiki ha'chel ha'adom lo'rov al panecha adama. All right, so these are the sons of Adam. That's not just Cain's side that's multiplying on the earth. That's both Cain and Seth who was appointed instead of Abel that are multiplying on the earth because God clearly identifies that as Adam. All right. In other words, these are the descendants of Adam that are multiplying on the face of the earth. All right. And daughters were born unto them. Ubanot. Uh, uh, were born to them. So that's literally daughters of Seth's children as well as daughters of Cain's children. There's really no distinction of which lineage that would be. Uh, but then we get into the other part here, that the sons of God Okay, Ve'ahu b'nei Elohim et ha'benot ha'adam, the sons of God, or, or literally, and looked and, and looked, the sons of God, they looked uh, at the daughters of Adam. 
of man, Ha'adam, all right, Ha'adam specifically are descendants of Adam. Now, I, I would even say this, I know there's all kinds of doctrines out there, and please listen very carefully. I'm not ascribing to one doctrine or the other on this issue. But I want to show you something in light of the Sethite doctrine. The Sethite doctrine has that these sons of God are Seth's sons. All right, that's where they claim that is. They are descendants of Seth's, so therefore they're called B'nai Ha'Elohim. All right, and I think I can prove that that's not correct. Because the thing is, if that's the case, then you're saying that the sons of Cain are an evil and a cursed generation. That would be all of them. But the problem is, these daughters are from the line of Adam, from Adam's line, and so therefore it could be either from Cain or Abel. Unless you take it literally that Cain is cursed and he's not Adam's son. And again, I'm not ascribing to these doctrines. I'm only trying to show you the doctrines that are out there. All right. So, but in my opinion, the fact that they are the daughters of Adam clearly shows, and of course I translate this as man, but this shows that these daughters are descendant of Adam. And these sons of God, they see them that they are fair. And it says here, They took to them wives. You know, whomsoever, whichever ones they chose, they just took these women and, 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 you know, slept with them, had children by them, right? But here's what's troubling. Because the Sethite doctrine is saying that basically, Cain's sons saw that, excuse me, Seth's sons, which they claim are the, are the sons of God, saw that Cain's daughter, that they were prettier than Seth's children were, and they slept with Cain's daughters, and God was angry, and God says uh, in verse 3, And the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for that he is also flesh, therefore shall his days be 120 years old. All right. So therefore, God is there's. They believe that God is angry with Seth's sons because they took Cain's daughters and married them. That doesn't even make sense. All right. It doesn't make sense in light of some things I'm going to share with you here. All right. Again, let's now go to verse three. Just like it says, the Lord, the Lord said, the Yomer, Yehovah la la Yadon Ruchi. Uh, all right, my spirit shall not abide with mankind or with Adam's children forever, for that he is also flesh. Therefore shall his days be 120 years. So something happened, and it wasn't so much because of Adam's children, but because of something these sons of God did. So we have to identify who the sons of God are. And I think we get the idea when we get to verse 4. Now, I have here on the screen for you the Nephilim, because it does say right here, Ha Nephilim, Ha you Ba'aretz. The Nephilim were in the earth in those days. Now, there's an interesting problem here, and because the Talmudists, when they were putting the vowels in later, I say Talmudists because uh, Orthodox Jews uh, will tell you that when you have all the vowel points in here, it is a result of Talmudists. So I'm not saying this in a bad manner, just telling you who put the vowels in there, because the Hebrew did not have vowels. All right? But when they put this in here, they put the vowels incorrectly here. Now you might say, Steve, what do you mean they put it incorrectly? I can prove they did. Moses wrote those first five books, right? Genesis, Leviticus, Numbers, Exodus, Exodus, and Deuteronomy, right? Sure he did. Now, we have to go to the book of Numbers to prove this, and it's right here, Numbers chapter uh, 13, verse 33. It says here, And there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Enoch, who come of the 
that should be Nephilim. It should have an A and not an I. And we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, so were we in their sight. All right? Now, what am I getting at here? Let's make it simple. All right? And there we saw the what? The Nephilim, Hanephilim, et Hanephilim, Bene Enoch, the children of Enoch. They were plural. But there is, and, and I really have to thank uh, uh, Brad Hutkins and uh, Dr. Steve Pigeon for noting this and bringing this to my attention. It's the difference in the spelling here. The Nephilim, if we just take the, the root here, drop the hay, it's Nun fe yod lamed yod mem. All right? But when it comes to Enoch, who's mean from Hanafalim, it's Nun fe, there is no yod right here between fe and lamed, yod mem. Moses was identifying. Now they translate it over here if it's just the same, but it's not. Without that extra yod, this should be Nafalim. Falling. We should have a a, a kamatz underneath that fe right there. Na fa fa a lean. Because yod is not there, so therefore there's no e sound. They add the e, but there's no yod there to give it the nephilim as if it's the children of the nephilim. And the nephilim are the fallen ones, which were the angels that did not keep their first estate. Okay? Boy, this is going to get interesting. I'm getting revelation just as I'm even talking to you guys. All right? So, the children are the Nephilim, where, where you would have the, uh, the, the vowel here, which gives the Yod there, which gives the nef -i, Nephilim, 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 all right? Which, Enoch, though, he literally, his father, see it says mean, he's from the Fallen ones. He was literally from one of those fallen angels. All right. Now, a dear brother wrote me, and I really appreciated that he did this. He wrote me and explained to me that there was a genealogy for Enoch, but it's only his father, and it's, uh, um, how did he pronounce his name? I think it's, let me just pull it up real quick. And that way I have it here. All I have to do is put Enoch, whoop, Enoch, and then I can get it because it's over in the book of Joshua there. Okay, yes, he, his father was Arba. Now, there was a city named after him, which is Hebron, but his father, Enoch's father was Arba. And according to the scripture, though, according to what Moses wrote here, that Enoch's father he was literally from the fallen angels, not falling. So they actually did the vowel point wrong. Now, so let's go back. Now, another thing this does show us that when the Joshua, when they came into the land of Israel, they were dealing with what? They were dealing with Nephilim, just like it was in the days before the flood. We're going to go into that again, how they got here. And I'm going to show you some shocking things though here in just a minute. I got to remember that thing that God just revealed to me as well. So Lord, help me that it'll come back to my memory here in just a moment. Because see, revelation doesn't come to your brain. It comes to your heart. All right. So anyway, um, maybe the Lord will bring it back to me as we go into this. So let's go back now. All right. Oh, yes, I remember. Let me make myself a note. <laughs> I don't want to forget to tell you this. All right. Because they were in the earth, right? And uh, they were in the earth during those days, according to what the scripture says here. All right, verse back, we're back in Genesis 6, verse 4. So this one as well, the Nephilim, Ha Nephilim, is without the Yod here. So again, we know then that the vowel point is not correct. It should be Nephilim. All right, Ha Nephilim, Ha Yu Be'aretz. Now that would make more sense because we're not talking about the giants as of yet. We're talking about the fallen angels. And where are they? They're on the earth. Now, here's a very interesting point. Now I can tell you my revelation because I didn't think about it before. If we go to Job, this is exciting to me. 
Now, it fell upon a day that the sons of God, all right, the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came also among them. Now, so if you want, there, there, by the way, there's only, there's only one place in Scripture other than Genesis that speak about the sons of God, at least that I could find. I could be wrong on this. That's mainly in the book of Job. Now, there's also one in Hosea, and we're going to go to that one in Hosea because there is... An amazing insight when you're truly a son of God and there is a way to be a son of God and Adam was a son of God all right but his children after him were in a fallen state but in this case here in the book of Job in chapter 1 we read now it fell upon a day that the sons of God came to present themselves before the Lord and Satan came also among them all right and the Lord said unto Satan Whence comest thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. What? He's walking around in the earth? Now notice what Genesis is. Genesis 6, 4. And the Nephilim were in the earth in those days. Those fallen angels were in the earth. What were they doing? Just like Satan, walking around in it. And what does God say uh, to Satan in Job chapter 1 verse 6 there? He's walking around in the earth. But it also says up here, let me find the right spot there. Okay, and it was in the day that the sons of God came uh, Gam hasatan betocham. All right, he's in the midst of them. He's right there in the middle of them. Why? Because I don't. I I'm really beginning to think that the sons of God here were those angels that ended up becoming the fallen angels later because they didn't keep their first estate. See, we have another, we have several places in Job where it speaks about these sons of God. And in fact, God even says, where were you when I laid the foundations of earth and the sons of God all rejoiced for joy? These were his angels that were rejoicing when God had laid the foundations of the earth. Why were they rejoicing? You want to know why? God was paving a way of redemption. You say, redemption, Steve? Wait a minute. When God laid the foundation of the earth, Adam and Eve, they hadn't even been formed yet. How could God be laying a foundation for redemption? God knew what was going to happen. You have to remember, how did Satan get here in the first place? You know, in fact, I think in the book of Isaiah, it even says that God creates good and he creates evil. Satan was brought into existence and Jesus Christ, Yeshua HaMashiach, is the, is the redemption or the fixing of the mistake of Satan himself. That's a lot deeper than I can even go into right now. Because um, that normally goes over most people's heads if I get into that aspect of it. But this issue right here is that Satan is in the midst of these angels. Right? And the Lord said, and Satan, by the way, was, a, was an angel as well. Okay, and so God says to him, Satan, when, when did you, where, where, did, where did you come from? Then Satan answers the Lord and said, from going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. So again, we jump back over here to Genesis. The Nephilim or the Nephilim were in the earth in those days. And what do we know that they were doing? They were so lustful for the daughters of Adam they couldn't keep their first estate as true divine beings, but instead they wanted to cohabitate and have a sexual relationship with these women. Not content with the, with the position that they were given. All right? So we read on, it says, and also after that, that's an interesting expression right there. Vegam ashar. 
In other words, after a while they were walking around the earth when the sons of God, now, now God's referring to them as the sons of God. First he lets you know, Moses lets you know they were the fallen angels, but he also lets you know that they were the sons of God. They came in unto the daughters of men, of Adam, all right? And they had children by them. The same were mighty men that were of old, the men of renown. Right? If these were, if these sons of God were supposed to be the sons of Seth, why is it that we don't seem to have that they are men of renown until, as the, as the theory goes, that they slept with Cain's daughters? If it's, you have to understand, because if they're men of renown, they're men of renown because of their fathers, all right? Not to say that you don't get your genes from your mother too as well. Sure you do. But if they were Adam's offspring, if they were from Seth and from Seth's children to his son, to his son, to his son, and now we have them here and they have children, it doesn't matter who they have a child with, would not that child be of a great renown? No. Why is it that only God identifies them as children of renown when it's in conjunction with the Nafalim that are already walking in the earth. All right, so these sons of God I put to you are the fallen angels. All right, now, and the Lord saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of, his, of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually. That's not Seth's children. I don't agree with that. All right, now I got to show you something though. Do we have scripture where it speaks about the Son of God or a Son of God? Now we know Yeshua is the Son of God in a singular. Adam, we know that it was God who created Adam. And in fact, I want to take you, let's see, where are we at here? Yeah, Genesis 2. And, and you can go back to Genesis 1. In fact, maybe we should. Let's just, let's just quickly go to Genesis 1 before we go to Genesis 2. All right? In Genesis 1, uh, we have God creating man. And let me just find it. And God created, let's see... Um, I'll find it here. Here we go. And God said, let us make man in our own image. Okay. Make, make man, Adam. Remember, those girls were benot ha-adam. So they're the daughters of the very creation of God. All right. He's going to make them after his own image, his own likeness, right? He's going to give them authority over all the animals, all the beasts, all the birds, the creeping things, even that that's in the sea. And then we get to the next verse, verse 27. And God created man in his own image, and in the image of God created he him. All right? And then what does it say next? It's very important. Zakra unekeva. See, Zakra, male, unekeva, female, bara otam. He created them both male and female as one being, just locked in like that. And God blessed them and God said unto them, Be fruitful and multiply and replenish the earth. Then we get into Genesis chapter 2. All right, let's scroll down, let's jump over to Genesis 2. All right, this is all important what we're going to do here, right? Now, as we get into here in verse 7, Genesis 2, verse 7, Then the Lord God formed man of the dust of the ground. Now, this is a little different. All right? So, because when we say the sons of God, 
Now we know that Adam is not just the sons of God, he is the son of Yehovah Elohim. That's the son of God he is of. All right? Then the Lord God formed man. Yehovah Elohim et ha'adam afar min ha'adama from the dust of the earth, right? He makes him from the clay of this ground. Now, some of this is old news for you guys, all right? He breathes in his nostrils that breath of life. The man becomes what? All right, then we have on here, that man becomes a living soul. After God breathes into his, his nostrils that breath of life, all right? Now, as my argument has always been, and I'll make the argument again as I always do, in verse 9, we have, Out of the ground made the Lord God to grow every tree that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. Now, the tree of life also. The eights hachayim, all right? Betoch Hagan. All right, so in the middle of the, oh, wait a minute, let me just back up here. I just want to see, because I see what they're putting in English, and I realize that there's words missing here. All right, no, it doesn't say the tree of life also. It doesn't say that, it doesn't say the word also. Uh, there's no gam in there. All right, so we just go from good for food. All right, Vetov Lameachal Ochel Ve'ez Hachayim. All right, the tree of life, Betoch, in the midst of, Hagon in the midst of the garden. Ve'ez hada'at tov Remember how Yeshua says, you know, a tree is known by its fruit. And then he deals with the Pharisees and he says, you're a bunch of serpents, vipers. How can you escape the damnation of hell? Let your own, you say that you were the, your fathers, if you'd have been in the days of your fathers, you wouldn't have killed the prophets. He said, your own words are testifying against you. I'm just paraphrasing. He says, because you say you're the sons, fill up the measure of your fathers. In other words, they come from the tree of what? Of knowledge of good and evil. As rabbis in the state of Israel 2,000 years ago, yes, they knew what was right and what was wrong. In fact, modern uh, rabbinic Talmudist Kabbalists that are out there say that there is what they call the holy serpent. There ain't nothing holy about the serpent. All right? In fact, some uh, uh, Kabbalists say that if it hadn't have been for the serpent, we would have never been freed. They didn't want to even be a part of the Garden of Eden. They want to be free so they could have the promiscuity that they have today. Right? But when it comes to this right here, what I wanted to focus on, though, is the tree of life is called the eights and the tree, or and tree, ha chayim. If it's a tree of chayim, of life, then what is the fruit of the tree? Chayim, that's exactly right. If you are from the tree of knowledge of good and evil, what is the fruit of the tree of knowledge of good and evil? Only good and only evil. Yeah, you can get some good, but you also get evil. You're getting both sides with that. Now, God breathed into that man that he formed from the dust of the ground. He breathed what? Chayim. Chet, yod, yod, mim, sofit, right? Now, let me just do something here. I really want to make sure you guys can see this. Let me just, I don't know if I can actually make it. Yeah, I can, I can see them both now, all right? You have right here, Chaim, right? That's what he breathes in man's nostrils, right down here. What did he breathe in? What did he breathe in? He breathed in the Chaim. Ha Chaim, the He is only like the word the, the life, Chaim, Ha Chaim, which really means it was the only source of life. All right? So Adam has this breathed into his nostrils, and he becomes a living soul, but he, now he's got the chaya, the singular version of it. All right? So, but after the fall, what happened? 
Because some people say, no, 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 it couldn't be that Adam had the chayim from the tree of life because when the fall came, God put the cherubims there to guard the way of the tree of life that man didn't put forth his hand to take and live forever. That was all of Adam's children after him. Why? Because now that man is in a fallen state, thanks to not only what Adam and Eve did, but God also knew what was going to happen in Genesis chapter 6. He knew that those angels would not keep their first estate. He knew that they would cohabitate with the women. And he knew that they would produce children that would be of renown, which basically are Nephilim, like it well, they are, as Enoch says in his own book, the Nephilim were the children of the Nephilim or the fallen angels. Make sense now? All right. So Adam was a son of God, but once he and Eve sinned, it cut that way to the tree of life, and God now had to guard the way. You didn't notice how the scripture says to guard the way of the tree of life? And what did Yeshua say when he came? Just paraphrasing. I am the what? The way. The truth. And the what? The life. The chayim. He is that way, the truth and the life. And the way was guarded by the angels. In other words, how to get to Christ could only be revealed through him. Now, so I got the looking. Where else in the scripture does it speak about the sons of God? Well, there's one that I could find. And like I said, I may have missed something else. And if I did, you guys help me out, please. In Hosea, besides the book of Job, and it seems like every place in the book of Job, I believe is talking about those angels before they were fallen. Okay? And you got to remember... Even when he mentions them in Genesis chapter 6, he says the sons of God saw the daughters of man that were fair. They took them to their wives. They're not fallen until after they actually have the sexual reunion with them. So they could still be called sons of God up until that moment. Now we go to Hosea. We come to chapter 2. And it says here, uh, actually, it's in chapter 1. Let me, let me do this for you guys that are, that are listening in. Uh, if you go to chapter 1, most people have KJV, it's verse 10. And I think it is important to read verse 9 as well. Let me back up to verse 8. Now, when, he had, when she had weaned lo Ruhumah, she conceived and bore a son. And he said, call his name lo -Ami, For you are not my people, and I will not be yours. All right? This is God dealing with the sins of Israel and, and getting to the time of divorce. So he's having Hosea, he married a prostitute, has children by her, and has him name those children as signs to Israel of their sins. All right? Now, if you go to verse 10 in the KJV, uh, I'll have to go to chapter 2, because in the Hebrew Bible it's chapter 2, verse 1. Then he says, yet, yet the number of the children of Israel. Now this is not house of Israel in this case here. Notice this. All right. And it will be, in other words, that's what that is. And it will be. All right. From the number, B'nai Yisrael, from the number of the children of Israel. All right shall be as the sand of the sea. Kachol hayom ashar lo yami imad. That you can't number it. It's innumerable, in other words. All right? Ve lo isper ve haya bemakom ashar ve yomer lachem lo ami so God prophesies to them and he says to them that it shall come to pass that instead of that which was said unto them, you are not my people, it shall be said unto them, you are the children or the sons of the living God. So, can the children of Israel, which are all 12 tribes when he says children of Israel, the B'nai Yisrael, can they actually be sons of God? Yes. And God prophesies through the prophet Hosea saying that they would be, and that they would be an innumerable number. 
But there is only one way you can be a son, Bene El Chai. Chai is a singular word for the word Chaim. What was Adam after God breathed the Chaim into his nostrils? He was a la nefesh Chaya. That is Chet Yod with another He because why? It's a feminine version showing that what? He was a bride also for Christ. But it is, they will be called Lahem to them, the Yomer Lahem. Bene el Chai, sons of the living God. Now, it's not speaking like it was in Genesis 6 because why? The Chaim, the tree of life, the way after Adam and Eve had sinned, that way was cut. God sent the angels to guard that way. The way to Christ was guarded. Until what? Until the second Adam, Yeshua, could come. He had to come and fix the mistake of the first Adam. Mary, his own biological mother on the earth, had to come and fix the mistake that Eve made and believe God's word without doubting. But when it comes to Adam, Yeshua had to fix what he made the mistake and willfully sinned. And he was the very tree of life. He was the very father of Adam himself. I mean, everything in his whole life that he did proved that he was God. When they put the crown of thorns on his head, don't you know that that was, that was the same God that stood in the midst of the burning bush at Mount Sinai? It's the eighth Sinai, which means the, the tree of thorns. And from the midst of that spoke Yehovah. That's not even how to say the name. And I appreciate Nehemi Gordon and even Dr. Pigeon. These men have worked very hard to find what to be what is actually that pronunciation. But I still feel like there's something missing. Because according to the Hebrew Matthew, Yeshua could heal the sick and raise the dead by the pronunciation of the divine name. We're missing that today. Anyway, they become sons of the living God. So when do they become sons of the living God? It's a prophecy. And then they become the sand of the sea. It's not talking about the house of Judah. It's all 12 of the tribes. But what makes them become that? Go to John. A beautiful prophecy. He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. And they which were sent were of the Pharisees. And they asked him and said unto him, Why baptize thou if thou be not the Christ, nor Elias, neither the prophet? John answered them, saying, I baptize with water, but there stand among you one whom you know not. Hang on, wait a minute, wait a minute. I apologize. Uh, let me let me look it up again to be exactly right on this because I've got the wrong verse, I believe. When I was looking this up, that's how I found it. That's Hosea, okay. Uh, I'll find you here one second, friends. Just bear with me. Yeah, here we go. You go through there everywhere. Can't find it nowhere. Right? Can't find it anywhere. Except just a, just a very rare place. Like I said, John 1, 12. Here it is. All right. Yeah, I went too far, far down. I don't know how that happened. Let me back up to verse 7. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. He was not that light, but was sent to bear witness of that light. That was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Notice that. <sighs> You know, before I read verse 12, let me go up here. Let me just share with you. John had the revelation. In the beginning was the Word. 
And the Word was with God. And the Word was what? It was God. The same, not was a God as Jehovah's Witnesses would have you believe. And by the way, if you're Jehovah's Witness and when the, when the uh, when this Talmudist reign begins to take place with the Noahide laws, those guys have got it safe. If you believe Yeshua is just a little old prophet, he wasn't the divine son of God, he wasn't God manifested in the flesh, don't worry, you won't lose your head. Either you will forsake the very faith in words of the of John's words here you will have to forsake these words right here in order to be to, to, to not lose your head or run one I don't know which in the beginning was the word the word was with God and the word was God plain and simple if you believe that your head will be lost when his Talmudist reign moves on to scene the same was in the beginning with God not only was God, but he was with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was what? Life. Chaim. The life was what? The light of men. In the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Actually, the light was the light of man. It was the light of, well, men, plural, what? Adam and Eve. They had the Chaim. And Eve was just like, I mean, John the Baptist was a type of Eve. He was from his mother's womb come out filled with the Holy Spirit. He came out with that Chaim in him. When Eve was taken from the side of Adam, what was it? It was, she had the Chaim in her. No need to breathe in her nostrils. She came filled with the Holy Spirit. The fruit of the tree of life. So that was the light of men or mankind at that beginning. And the light shineth in darkness and the darkness comprehended it not. What is that darkness? That was those demonic... I'll bite my tongue. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. The same came for a witness to bear witness of that light that all men through him might believe. Okay, if he came to bear witness of the light, that's why he had to be born filled with the life of Almighty God just as when Eve came out of her own husband was filled with that life. Why? To bear witness. What's to bear witness? To show that the life was alive and real. I know some people get upset, Steve, why are you yelling? I'm, I'm so passionate and I'm trying to get people to understand it. Don't you realize, my friends, except you believe these things, you just won't make it. He was not that light. He was not Christ, in other words, but was sent to bear witness of that light. How could he bear witness? There had to be that light in him to bear witness, or the Chaim, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. He came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. So how do you become sons of God? Or as Hosea said, they would be called what? The sons of the living God. Because why? The Chaim could be restored in them. How was that life imparted out into Eve? When God put Adam into that deep sleep and opened up his side, and from his side he took out what? He took out Eve, Chava. And she had that life within her. But in order for her to come out, in order to be able to bring forth children on the earth, in order to be able to bring that tree of life and that, that beautiful life down through their children, Adam had to go to a deep sleep. Just like Yeshua had to go to a deep sleep and his side was opened up by the Roman soldier. And that water and that blood came from his side. That, and where is the life? It's in the blood. The Chaim was in the blood. And, and I'll tell you something, not everybody has that life. You might have a natural life, being born on this earth, but until you have received the life of Christ in you, you cannot be called a son or a daughter of God. 
You have to fulfill what the scripture says over here in John. But as many as received him, Yeshua, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. How did he do it? I'll show you. John chapter 22. After Yeshua had been crucified, his side had opened up, that blood and water came out, separated like it was with Adam, and then he did like Adam. What did he do? He woke up from that sleep. And he did what Adam was supposed to be able to do, but Adam forsook it. Then said Jesus to them again, Peace be unto you as my Father has sent me, even so send I you. And when he had said this, he what? He breathed on them and saith unto them, Receive ye the Holy Ghost or the Holy Spirit. He was the tree of life. He imparted that life into them. Just like he did with Adam the first man. So, as we see, now we can see then in Genesis chapter 6, a completely different situation. I'm in the wrong Genesis, sorry. For the Nephilim were in the earth in those days, the Nephilim, the fallen. The fallen angels were in the earth that, in those days. And when, basically... Vegam Achreken Ashar, okay? And also, after this, after this, see? They came, the sons of God, to the daughters of man. Seth's daughters. Believe me, they weren't stupid. They came to Seth's daughters to try to pervert a race of people on this earth. God wiped them out during the days of the flood and eight righteous souls came on board. But that didn't stop their evil plan. No, it didn't. What did they do? What did, what did Joshua say to us? Right? Um, remember the word which Moses, the servant of the Lord, commanded you, saying, The Lord your God giveth you rest and will give you this land. Your wives, your little ones, and your cattle shall abide in the land which Moses gave you beyond the Jordan. But you shall pass over before your brethren in armed, and all the mighty men of valor, and shall help them, till the Lord giveth you your brethren rest. All right? But what happened, though? They did what they weren't supposed to do. What did, what did Moses warn them about? In Deuteronomy chapter 18, Moses says here, They shall have like portions to eat beside that which is is due according to the Father's houses. When you are come into the land which the Lord your God gives you, you shall not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you anyone that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, one that useth divination, a soothsayer, or an enchanter, or a sorcerer, or a charmer, or one that consulteth a ghost, or a familiar spirit, or a necromancer. For whosoever doeth these things is an abomination unto the Lord. And because of these abominations, the Lord thy God is driving them out from before thee. That was the Nephilim. Okay? That's what Joshua saw. Right? When Joshua went over, let's see if I may have lost where that was at. Um... But when Joshua went over there as one of the spies to spy out the land, that's actually in the book of Numbers. Okay, now I remember. See? And what were they? See if I got it up here. I'm trying to find, see if I've got, yeah, here we go, right here. In the book of Numbers, see? When they went over there, there we saw the Nephilim, the sons of Anak, who came of the Nephilim, and we were in our own sight as grasshoppers, and so were we in their sight. That's what was there. The Nephilim had managed to get back. Deuteronomy, Moses tells you how. He tells you plainly how they did it. Don't do after the abominations of these nations. Okay? There should not be found among you any that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire. Okay? 
literally says, me'aver, that's cross over, not burn them at the stake. Me'aver ubato be'esh, don't cross over in the fire or through the fire. That's how they and, they, and he talks about all these different wicked things that they do. Divination, Suse, and Enchanter. They bring up a ghost or whatever. Why? They're getting in touch with the Nafalim. Because according to the book of Enoch, they would be involved in the affairs of man until the consummation, which the consummation is the end of all things. Well, guess what? The children of Israel didn't obey God. In fact, Moses in, in Leviticus 18 gave the command. All right, verse 20, And thou shalt not lay carnally with thy neighbor's wife to defile thyself with her, and thou shalt not give any of thy seed to set them apart to Molech, neither shalt thou profane the name of thy God. I am the Lord. That, and then he goes back into sexual sins. Thou shalt not lie with mankind who is with womankind. It is an abomination. Thou shalt not lie with any beast to defile thyself therewith. Neither shall any woman stand before a beast. And all the verses before you get to verse 20 right there, or excuse me, verse 21, are all about sexual sins. So do you think passing through the fire to Moloch is not a sexual sin? Sure it is. And did Israel do it? Yes. Both the house of Israel and the house of Judah did it. When Manasseh was the king, the king of Jerusalem, which was the king of the house of Judah, what did they do? Well, they built again the high places which Hezekiah his father had destroyed. He reared up altars for Baal and made an uh, Asherah as did Ahab the king of Israel and worshipped all the host of heaven and served them. Who's the host of heaven? Those fallen sons of God, the Nephilim. It's not that they were just serving, worshiping stars, this constellation and that constellation. No doubt they were doing that as well. But the host of heaven were the Nephilim, where they were fallen. Where were they? They were in heaven, in a heavenly abode. But they fell. And he built altars in the house of the Lord, whereof the Lord said in Jerusalem, Will I put my name? They were trying to bring in their own divine son of God, but he wasn't divine. And we also have in 2 Kings as well, uh, the house of Israel did the same thing, and they caused their sons and their daughters to pass through the fire and used divination and enchantments and gave themselves over to do that which was evil in the sight of the Lord to provoke him, that the Lord was very angry with Israel. God sent Joshua and Caleb and the 12 tribes of Israel into this land to destroy these nations that had done these very same abominations. And then no wonder why when the time when Yeshua gets here, by the time Yeshua is here, it wasn't too many years after this situation here, over here in the book of Kings, when Yeshua finally comes on the scene and everything, he's calling them a bunch of serpents and vipers and seed of vipers and family of vipers. Why? They had figured out how to pass their seed through the fire. They were doing after the other nations, bringing more Nephilim into the, into the world. In fact, Jude, in his book, writes that they, they came in unaware. These were who were foreordained to this condemnation. Let me just pull it up real quick, and we're going to close right here with this. I'll close now. My heart, I got I get so excited. And I just pray, by God's grace, you guys can see this. See? He's a servant of Christ. He says here in verse 3, Beloved, when I came all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Not just a common salvation. For there are certain men crept in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. That's Nephilim. Turn the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. And they're doing it today. They're slipping in, Talmudists are slipping in, posing themselves if they, as if they were Christians or Messianic or Hebrew roots or and I'm not saying these different groups are bad. I'm not saying it about the groups. I'm talking about infiltrators, evangelicals, etc. And they're coming in and they're telling you, oh, what's wrong with Noah's 
Seven Noahide laws. What, because they're in the Talmud? There's a problem with that? When I read what Jude says, yes, there is a problem with that. They crept in unaware, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Because according to the Talmudic law of a Noahide law, if you believe that Yeshua is Christ, He is the Mashiach, He is divine, you have denied the very Lord God if you say that He's not. And that's what they're doing. I will therefore put you in remembrance, though you once knew this, how that the Lord, having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. You know, it's funny, not funny as haha, -ha, but Yeshua said, don't fear those that can destroy the body, but fear him who can destroy both soul and body. You know, I realize now what he's talking about. They might destroy your body and cut your head off because you refuse to back down. You will stand there and you will declare that Yeshua HaMashiach Jesus Christ is indeed not just the Son of God. He is the living God manifested in flesh. And Yeshua said, don't fear them that can destroy the body. In other words, they might behead you for that. But if you do what they do and deny our very Lord Jesus Christ, Yeshua Mashiach, then that's when you need to fear because when Yeshua returns, He's bringing judgment. He's coming with 10,000 of His saints to do what? They will destroy both soul and body in that coming. You know, we're about getting ready, me and my wife, to do a teaching on the book of Revelation. You're going to find out some shocking things in the book of Revelation that you never knew about before. Things we didn't know about before. We're going to be finding out that that beast and the dragon that gives him his power, Satan, the serpent. The dragon, by the way, in Revelation is a flying serpent. Isn't it interesting how Talmudists call their serpent the holy serpent? He that was and is not and shall be. You'll find out that Pharisaic range is a beast system. I'll also prove to you and show you where in Talmudic tradition there are those calling to mark in the forehead those that are against them. Can't buy or sell, saving you take the mark. Sanctions have been put on other nations for a long time for not complying with the demands that is being demanded upon all nations to follow a Talmudic belief. We got some shockers coming your way. I'm Steve Benoon. I've kept you long enough. I apologize for being so long. I trust this is a blessing to you. And if you, if you want to stand for truth, stand with this ministry. Support the work we're doing. It's a very short time, and we are trying desperately to figure out ways to put some of this in your hands where you have it permanently. Because as it is right now, we know the time is coming. All our videos will be shut down. So we're trying to do overtime. I've got a duplicator here. We just need to put some of these messages on DVD and start getting them in the hands of the people because there's coming a time where you won't be able to get anything. So pray for us. Help support the work so we can get this out there. Shalom, shalom. In a world of angels.